Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the PCI Endpoint Subsystem Open Items discussion. Um, I'm Manivanan Sitasio. I work as a senior kernel engineer at the Qualcomm Manning team of Linaro. So in the past, uh, Kishan used to drive this discussion, uh, but since he moved on to a different job, he passed on the baton to me this time. So this is the agenda for today's discussion. So the first item is uh, Virtio EPF drivers for interoperability. And then the second one is device integration with uh, endpoint subsystem. And then the third one is using general uh, framework for managing the output window memory in endpoints. So the items two and three were carried forward from previous year uh, because uh, they didn't get materialized. So I thought of presenting uh, them this year also to get some consensus and then uh, move forward with the implementation. All right, let's get started with the, the first topic. So, okay, before moving into the topic, I would like to give a quick overview of Vertio. So Vertio is an open standard for communication between drivers and devices of different types, which means uh, Vertio offers a standard communication between uh, two entities and one entity will expose the device and another one will just consume the device. So this Vertio specification was initially developed by Rusty Russell for his own hypervisor called Elgis. And uh, so there he used the Vertio for uh, you know, managing the communication between the hypervisor and then the guest operating system, which was Linux. Now the specification is maintained by a standards body, uh, which uh, maintains the specification and also improves them over a period of time. So since uh, Vertio was uh, initially developed for the you know, hypervisor use case, uh, it is primarily used in the virtualization environment for exposing the IO devices to the guest operating system by the hypervisor. And today, uh, Vertio is not only used by Elgist, but also by other hypervisors such as KVM, Acon, et cetera. And over the period of time, the use case of Vertio has uh, evolved outside of the virtualization environment. So it is now used for other, uh, you know, use cases like uh, internship communication within the SOC. So we have the RP message framework in the kernel, which is based on Vertio, and it is used for talking to the you know, multiple core process inside the SOC. So this is the simplified architecture of Vertio in a virtualized environment. So where we'll have the hypervisor and then the guest operating system in an SOC. So the hypervisor will expose the emulator devices to guest operating system. And as per the Vertio specification, we have a backend driver running on the hypervisor. So it will expose Vertio devices based on the hardware it wants to you know, uh, expose it to the guest, guest operating system. And those uh, Vertio devices will be consumed by the front end drivers uh, running in the guest operating system. So one really good thing about Vertio uh, specification is that it offers uh, uh, independency between these two entities, which means uh, a single hypervisor can uh, run with any sort of guest operating system, and the guest operating system can run with any type of hypervisor. So, which means if you are a hypervisor developer, then you need not worry about the uh, guest operating system ex um, exposing the front end drivers, and you can just develop the back end drivers for uh, you know exposing the virtual uh, devices to the guest. And this is one of the reasons why we go why we were considering adding the Vertio support to the endpoint framework that I will uh, cover in the later slide. So let me give a quick overview of the PC endpoint subsystem in kernel. Um, so traditionally, Linux has been used on the host uh, PCs, uh, run, I mean, like uh, PCs and servers, and you would connect a PC endpoint device to the you know, host machine uh, in the PCI bus, and uh, the Host machine will be running the uh, Linux operating system, which is completely open source, and then the endpoint devices will be running some random proprietary firmware. But if you want to run Linux on those small PC endpoint devices, then you need to use the PC endpoint subsystem in kernel. So it is added as a separate subsystem uh, under the PCI uh, uh, hierarchy. And there are two uh, entities in the PCI endpoint subsystem. The one is uh, endpoint controller, so these endpoint controllers uh, completely manage the PCA transport on behalf of the endpoint subsystem. So all of the PCA endpoint controllers supported in mainline are uh, device tree based. So we don't have any, uh, you know, ACPI or BIOS. So all the, these PCA controller drivers need to manage all the PCA transport, uh, you know, interactions like uh, enumeration, you know, allocation of resources like IRQ, memory, etc. And then the second entity is uh, endpoint function driver. So these drivers define uh, actual behavior of the device. 
Let's say if you want to develop an NVMe SSD, uh, PCI-based NVMe SSD, uh, with the help of endpoint subsystem, then you need to have a dedicated function driver here, uh, talking the NVMe protocol to the host, and also you know managing the non-volatile memory on the device. So we can say that the endpoint function drivers are the heart of the endpoint subsystem. And like any PCI uh, endpoint device, we also need an uh, equivalent driver on the host for exercising the full functionality. So right now, the uh, mainline Linux kernel exposes uh, I mean, has the uh, PCI endpoint test driver and uh, on the endpoint. And then we have one uh, equivalent driver on the host called PCI endpoint test MISC driver. And this driver will just you know uh, uh, exercise some basic functionality of the subsystem, not suitable for production. But as I said in the previous example, if you are developing any uh, NVMe-based uh, PCI cards, then we just need to you know, create one PCI endpoint function for the NVMe, and then we can make use of the existing host driver uh, without any modification, because it just follows the NVMe specification. And hey, that's the, you know, that's the advantage of uh, using the specification type. But the problem is we don't have uh, specification for rest of the devices. Uh, even if that is specification, the devices don't follow it. And that is another reason why we wanted to uh, go for Vertio based uh, endpoint function drivers, because that is a standard for Vertio in place. So the idea for uh, using Vertio in the PC endpoint subsystem moved around 2019 with a patch from uh, Haoshin Wang. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. If not, please forgive me. So. Uh, the use case of, I mean, the idea of using Vertio in the endpoint uh, function, endpoint subsystem is to make use of the existing front end drivers on the host. So, in the previous slide, um, yeah, in this slide, we can imagine uh, we can replace hypervisor with the PC endpoint device and then the guest operating system with the host machine. So, these two will be connected over the PCI bus. Um, so this guy will be called uh, will, will be implementing the backend driver, and this will be implementing the frontend driver. So with the help of Vertio, the PC endpoint uh, developer can just uh, focus his time on developing the backend drivers uh, for exposing the Vertio devices to the host machine, and we can actually make use of the existing frontend drivers available on the guest operating system. It can be Linux, Windows, or you know, OpenBSD. So this greatly reduces the uh, fragmentation uh, because we need not develop our own uh, device driver in the host. And it also reduces the lead time drastically because uh, the endpoint developers can completely forget about the host and focus uh, the time on the endpoint development. So we have received three proposals so far for uh, adding the Vertio support in uh, endpoint subsystem. So I'm going to present uh, all of them and pick one of my favorite. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to interrupt. So the first proposal is from Haoshin Bank. Uh, it was back in 2019. So I have uh, presented the proposal in this picture. So we have the host and the endpoint devices connected over the PCI bus. Uh, so on the host machine, uh, on both host and the endpoint, we have Linux kernel running. And on the host, we have the Vertio net uh, front-end driver. And that is uh, talking to the Vertio PCI legacy driver. So the reason for using the legacy PCI transport uh, was because of shortcoming in the uh, endpoint fair subsystem because the endpoint subsystem uh, doesn't allow you to write to the you know the vendor specific capability registers uh, that's a requirement for using the modern PCI transport what are your PCI transport so because of that reason the legacy was used and then it talks to the PCI subsystem and that controls the RC so this and whole entire host side is unmodified in this proposal and the only modification is there in the endpoint. On the endpoint, we have the uh, PC endpoint IP that is controlled by the endpoint subsystem, and we have the Vertio EPF driver. So this is, this was the driver introduced in this proposal, and this driver exposes the Vertio net device to the host machine and also one local Vertio net device to the uh, endpoint. So you might wonder why we need a second local uh, Vertio net device on the endpoint. So the reason is just because for the sake of development. Because uh, when you when we want to use this proposal in a real life product, this block will be replaced by an uh, you know actual IP like a modem DSP that will be uh, you know transferring the data packets in and out of the word queue managed by the CPF driver. So, but if you want to you know uh, just get your hands on this implementation, then we need to have some sort of user interface right on the endpoint. 
So that's the reason the second Vertio uh, net device is exposed here, and that will bind to the Vertio net driver. This, these two are actually same drivers available in mainline. And uh, this will expose uh, a network interface to the endpoint, and this guy will uh, expose one more network device on the host. So these two, with the help of this, the user can actually talk to the host main point or PCI bus. You know, they can use IPO for any kind of uh, network uh, utilities for testing, benchmarking, etc. So this was the proposal from Hamash. Um, so in this proposal, this only this driver was introduced, but uh, this driver turns out to be very complex uh, to review uh, because uh, it was you know, exposing two different uh, virtual devices and also managing all the word queues by itself. So this proposal didn't move forward. I think uh, the author at the time was uh, you know, an intern and then he went back to his school. So he didn't get any, any attention afterwards. So here comes the second proposal from Kishon. Um, so Kishon being the maintainer of uh, endpoint subsystem at that time. So he proposed his own Vertio solution. Uh, he actually discussed this in the previous Columbus uh, uh, conference itself. So in his proposal, he has actually introduced one driver on the host side compared to the uh, first proposal where the host was unmodified, but he introduced one uh, Vertio PCI EPF driver for talking to the endpoint. And on the endpoint, he uh, introduced the vhost EPF driver. So vhost is traditionally used for uh, offloading the data plane implement, uh, you know, data plane handling uh, from the you know the backend process like Cromo in a virtualized environment. Uh, but since the code is already there and it is used for handling the you know the uh, word queues in the host, Kishon thought of you know making use of them. So he introduced the vhost EPF driver and also he modified the existing vhost library in the host uh, sorry in the kernel for. Uh, you know, as per the kernel device driver model, so that uh, the vhost EPF driver can uh, you know, bind to it. And he also made use of the existing vhost net dri driver. This is a client driver, actually. And this vhost net driver uh, is managing the uh, Vertio net device that is being exposed to the uh, host machine. I think the idea of using vhost uh, for this implementation was uh, just to make use of the, you know, uh, existing vhost uh, library so so that we can you know go for some code reusability um, but unfortunately this proposal also didn't get merged uh, mm -hmm. there were some discussions good discussions between uh, kishon and uh, the uh, vertio maintainer at that point of time but uh, i think uh, they didn't reach any sort of conclusion so uh, this proposal was uh, also kind of left on uh, so, so, uh, so just to add a comment here, right? Uh, so, my major use case at that time was really to have a RP message based communication between uh, two devices. So, previously, you know, like automotive vendors were using RP message for communication between uh, two cores within the same SOC. But uh, you know, as part of a requirement, they also wanted to extend it to use the same RP message protocol to communicate between uh, you know two independent uh, you know, cores in two independent SOCs. Uh, so that's when this was started. So, um, so, so one of the things uh, that made to that I had to use for using the vhost was really because you know you have this front end which has like a which actually manages the what are your ring, uh, and then you kind of like have like a shared mechanism to kind of like access that what are your ring from the back end. So vhost kind of like provided that interface uh, basically to access the V-ring in the in the front end and and, uh, and that's why it was really really uh, started. So so basically my my major major use case was uh, to use RP message. Uh, yeah, as part of that, I was also thinking it could potentially be used for uh, you know Vertio Net, uh, which which was initially introduced by uh, Haoshi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I actually used Vertio Net because I mean it's all same, right? <laughs> In your proposal, you have used RP message. I know that, but uh, I just wanted for the sake sake of comparison, I just used Vertio Net in the diagram. Yeah, thanks. So the next and uh, uh, recent proposal was from Sunshike. Uh, so th this proposal is almost similar to the first proposal from Hawashen, uh, and the only difference is uh, 
he made use of the Weaving Hitch uh, helpers that is actually part of the, you know, the vhost library. So he used the Weaving Hitch APIs for offloading the virtue queue management, uh, you know, of the front end. So the word queues are the fundamental building blocks of Vertio, right? So uh, it is used for transferring the data between the front end and back end. So uh, the word queues will be uh, created by the front end and the endpoint of the, you know, the back end needs to manage it. And in the first proposal, uh, all the handling has been done by this driver itself. And as Kishon said, uh, he wanted to make use of vhost for uh, you know, offloading those uh, word queue management. But in this proposal, he used weaving his APIs, Sunshike, uh, for offloading the you know, entire work queue management. So this is the key difference between proposal one and then uh, three, but uh, the rest of the functionalities are same. This also exposes the network device uh, to the user space uh, on the endpoint as well as on the host so that the both sides can communicate with each other. So in my opinion, uh, I'm thinking about moving forward with uh, the proposal from Shunsuke uh, because the proposal three seems to be a simple and also scalable one. Let's say if we want to uh, add support for Vertio SCSI in the future, uh, it can be done easily because uh, I should, uh, yeah, it should be noted that this EPF driver has been split into two parts in this proposal. One is the common Vertio library uh, that has abstracted uh, all the Vertio implementations. And then there is one uh, Vertio net EPF driver that only takes care of creating the Vertio net device for uh, the uh, host as well as for the endpoint. So if you want to add support for Vertio SCSI, then we can add one more EPF driver, Vertio Nets, uh, Vertio APF SCSI, and then make use of the existing, uh, you know, the Vertio common library. And then uh, compared to the proposal from Kishon, I think even though vhost allows us to uh, make use of, you know, the offloading the uh, word queue management, I think the, that is kind of achieved using Weaving Hedge in this proposal. So uh, that makes me feel like uh, having the vhost implementation is uh, somewhat overkill, uh, and it also adds complexity to this overall implementation. And the first proposal is uh, not going to fly because everything is handled within this Vertio APF driver. So, and that made the real driver really messy. Uh, it's hard to review and it's not going to be maintainable. Hey, sorry to um, interrupt you. Oh, yeah. the, the, the question I was going to ask um, is, in a world where hardware offload via VDPA is available, especially considering how much that has progressed with, with Vert.io Net, what value do you see this adding over, you know, either VDPA or another approach that kind of wraps SRIOV versus the, the, the implementation you're describing here? So I'm not uh, too familiar with VDPA. Sorry for that. Uh, so I have to check on that. Sorry, I'm not familiar with VDP implementation. I'm I'm not the uh, expert on it myself, but but it, it's it's kind of it, it, the idea is you kind of leverage SRIOV to offload at least queue processing um, to to the NIC, and it sounds like here you're kind of you're trying to achieve a similar thing by having the NIC firmware um, speak effectively for the VertIO kind of config and setup protocol. So um, I, and there's a lot of hardware out there already um, in the smart NIC ecosystem. I know that even, even the ConnectX line at Mellanox is supporting a lot of this stuff already. So I'm just kind of curious, like with, with, with that as an approach versus kind of building out this new uh, PCI transport layer, if, if there's any, uh, if, if there's been any, I mean, clearly uh, since I don't know if there's been any discussion of it or if any of the maintainers have responded, um, if not, and no one else um, wants to continue the discussion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, this is obviously for hardware that has an endpoint mode, but does not have SRIOV. Okay. So there's a ton of hardware that has endpoint modes, but that wouldn't be able to do this thing because there's just no SRIOV. This is very simple endpoint hardware that is very widespread. And then you can use something which is better than nothing, but it, it, it's... And that's mostly for prototyping because the performance is not that great with this. Uh, I think that I asked for the throughput measure, measurement from Shunsuke and he, he shared that uh, he was able to achieve less than one gigabits per second. Uh, yeah, the performance is not that good, I, but at least, but I think that can be improved. And that is, there are also a couple of issues. 
Uh, one more one, uh, one of the issue is that uh, currently we have to poll for the notification from the Vertio host uh, because we don't really have any mechanism for you know when the host uh, you know uh, says driver okay we can the endpoint cannot you know get any notification for that so we are just polling that specific register uh, continuously in a while loop waiting for the driver okay so these kind of you know uh, shortcomings are there and we are looking for ways to address them. So I, I'm, I'm very interested in this work in the open amp project. We're also looking at something um, like this for on chip SOC, but it's, it's so that we can take any vert IO protocol and make it work this way. Um, and so, you know, the, the endpoint may be a small Zephyr um, system, uh, an X86 host with a, uh, a full AM uh, ARM uh, system SOC on a on a PCI card. So net isn't the only applicability. If we can find something where vert IO in general can work in this kind of an AMP system, it's it, it's a has applicability in lots of places, right? So and yeah, I mean actually a gigabit is interesting in edge cases um, and IOT cases. So just because it doesn't apply to the server doesn't necessarily mean it's, you know, not interesting. And for for the polling problem, the, the issue is that the controllers are just too dumb. They, they don't say anything when the host is writing to a bar or sending something, there's no interrupt, no nothing. So the only solution is to poll currently. That's a yeah, harder problem. Uh, that's, <laughs> right, but that is also one more workaround that we are uh, discussing in the mailing list. So we can actually map uh, the uh, you know the interrupt controllers, uh, you know the MSI area to the bar, so that when the uh, host writes to that uh, interrupt controllers MSI area, the corresponding IAP can be triggered on the endpoint. So that's the path that's already floating, uh, but I don't know if that can be used to, for this uh, you know use case. Uh, well, the, really the other simple would be to to have a generic polling for that stuff. I mean, every single driver is is implementing the polling itself, which is kind of a bit silly. So uh, we we could we could have generic polling for for events and stuff changing in the bars or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's another option. So, uh, so in my opinion, right? Uh, yeah. So, so the approach by uh, Shunsuke looks fine, but uh, I think in addition to Vataio Net, uh, we should really. So I, I still have to see, like, uh, you know, what is the model driver model that is being used? How do you uh, tell whether it's going to be Vataio Net or uh, you know, like a Vataio uh, console or or SCSI or or whatever it is? Uh, but I think uh, in addition to having uh, a symmetrical or the same driver on both sides, uh, something like what I on it where you can use both sides. That could be like uh, asymmetrical protocols could also be used. Like for instance, RP message is like an asymmetric protocol, right? So you, you kind of like have like a different driver on the host and and a different driver on on the endpoint. Um, it's not same, but it would it would complement each other. Probably what your block could be something like that uh, because one one end would be writing and the other would just consume it uh right so so how it scales is something i would really be interested in uh and the other yeah, point I, I wanted yeah, sorry go ahead please go ahead i mean please go ahead yeah so the last point i wanted to make is um the vertio is actually so as you mentioned right it is it is a lot driven by the standard uh so if we are introducing uh like vertio epf i think uh, i would i would assume that 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 would have its own uh register map protocol itself so in that case, we should also try and add it in the uh, OASs or the Vertio standard, uh, that, that the link that you showed earlier. Um, I don't really think that's necessary uh, because we are already following the standard. I don't I don't know what's so special with the Vertio APF driver. So, or, so uh, the Vertio, so 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 the spec really says uh, the really the 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 register map or the address map. Uh, you know, at this offset you give this id or whatever it is right so yeah. so the vertio pci has its own um uh you know its own set of uh standard um yeah. you know standard registers 
I would I would assume that because when when I when I initially proposed my uh, solution in 2020, uh, that was one of the feedbacks that that we got uh, in the in the LPC because I was introducing uh, a Vertio PCI EPF, which was kind of like an light slightly uh, different from Vertio PCI, so which means I have to add that standard. So so looking at that, comparing it with that, looks like the Vertio EPF is something that that's that's new that you are planning to add, right? So in that case, that's, that should also be standardized. No, uh, so I I just went through the code. Um, I didn't try it on my hardware uh, fully yet. But uh, as far as I can see, this is just following the Vertio PCI standard, and it just exposes uh, whatever the registers that are defined by the spec in the bar uh, region. So I don't see really uh, you know any difference between that and this. Okay, so we are just so following the specification. Is, okay. okay. Okay, if there is no difference, I think then then that should be fine. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Mani, you've got two minutes, so I think if you want to and then I do have two topics to discuss, room. but <laughs> um, I don't think I can cover them. Uh, so the next one was uh, device tree integration uh, for the endpoint function driver. So I don't think I can uh, cover them. I mean, let, let me just give a quick overview of this. Uh, so the endpoint function driver currently has no uh, device tree support because they are just software blocks. Uh, they're like the endpoint test driver, which just simulates some uh, registers on the bar region. But we have one uh, odd driver called uh, EPF MHI driver. So MHI is the Qualcomm specific protocol for uh, transferring the data to packets between PCI host and endpoint. So if you are using any uh, Qualcomm-based PCI uh, endpoint devices, then most likely you will be using MHI. So this has a, a hardware backend in the SOC itself. So I would like to you know, uh, add a device tree node for this MHI uh, uh, function because it's there in the hardware and it's nothing software uh, based. So this is the proposal. Um, so the endpoint, uh, so the MHA function will be a child node of the PC endpoint controller, uh, which is already there. And uh, it will have some properties like rich that uh, denotes the function number because we can have eight physical functions in an endpoint and the function name to identify this uh, one. Uh, and then we have the property for uh, specifying the bar regions to be used. Uh, and this is going to be a 64 bit array because uh, we can, the endpoint can support multiple bars. And then the interrupt, uh, so the MHI has the facility to trigger uh, doorbell from the host. So whenever the host writes to some specific registers on the bar, uh, the MHI hardware can receive the interrupt you know, uh, from the PCI bus. So for that purpose, we need to have the interrupt property as well. So this is my proposal for you know, adding the device to node. I think we've got to wrap up. But I think it's a good question because next is Rob coming up. So I mean, maybe you can answer straight away. Yep. I don't know anything, Thanks. any Thanks. last questions for the audience, Maniwan? Anything you want no, to ask? No, that's it. I think I got the solution. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thanks. Everybody.